Okay, so uh, today I'm working on cleaning up some prints, and I'm making this video because I'm hopefully anybody who actually does a lot of resin printing, you're who I'm hoping to get some advice from. How do you actually go about cleaning up your print? That's the focus of what I'm talking about today. Once you get it off of the printer, you get all your supports off and before you start priming. For me, I've tried using a, a stylus, a rotozip, um, to clean up all the nub marks. Um, and I ended up grinding into, even with a low speed on my stylus, because I got a variable speed stylus, so I can speed up the bit or slow it down as much as I want. But either way, I still left a lot of marks on my, my models that I was just like, it, 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 it looks terrible. So what I have resorted to doing is lots of files. This is the main piece right here that I, I use all the time, which is a metal file with one side on it. It's a triangular shaped looking one. It's very small. Um, but this is the main, main thing that I use. Um, I fill in my drain holes with resin uh, and a UV light, which I have around here. Where'd my light go? There it is. And it's still on. But, and then I use a, a light to cure that resin. So I've got a pile of things. Now this one, I didn't, I messed up on this one here. Um, so like I've got three small models here with bases. Um, this guy goes with this one. He actually, I think goes this way here. Round about like that. And all these models are from Loot Studios. But there's that one. Um, and then this guy here, blend up like that. Sometimes I glue these on, sometimes I don't. It depends on how much, as I'm looking at it, how much I can get a paintbrush in if it's on here, or is it gonna be easier to put them on after I paint them? And my biggest concern about all that is always, if I glue it on, is it gonna mess up the paint job? Um, and then this guy here, who's got I mean, this is the only connection is right there, that one little tiny nub in that spot. I could easily connect this, but there's a bunch of parts up here in this part of the model where I don't think I'll be able to actually get to that neatly, neatly, is that easily? Plus underneath the cape would be kind of, so I'm, I'm not gonna put that on. But what I'm getting at is I've already filled in the drain holes, there's one there. Uh, there was one on the back side up in there. All the bases I've already gotten done and sanded. Um, this guy has one in the side of his leg and then one up there. Uh, I think that's all he had. That one's done. This guy had a couple up in there at on angles. Uh, and again, I got his stuff done. Um, this guy didn't have too many drain holes in him. Uh, he had two down here at the base of his feet. And then the rest of them weren't in spots where it would really, there was none in the bottom of this because he actually printed this whole piece here printed upside down, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. One of the legs printed, like the base was down here, the build base um, on this leg, I think. But I haven't even really started on his base. It's still in pieces down here. He actually is sitting on this chest. I'm not gonna fill that. There's no way I could even get close to filling that. So, uh, but the base is actually oozing all over my table because I haven't cleaned it up yet. Now this guy here, um, I kind of messed up on, and I just realized that as I was, he's been sitting on the table for a few days now. Um, and 
normally as I get all the parts off and this is another one where it's all in pieces and I got to put it all together um, just like this one here uh, this was a part this was a part each arm or this arm was a part and then the rest of his torso was a part um, actually the arm was there's the, the, the what is the word I'm looking for anyway you can see the line right there and right there so his upper torso each arm and each leg um, now with him gluing him up I didn't fill in all the, the drain holes because I filled them with super glue and then I glued them together um, and stuff like that I, I think I can get away with that Get off there. But this guy, I filled in a lot of the drain holes with my normal way of doing it with resin and then doing the light. And I just realized I missed all the drain holes where it's most important because as he's going to be standing, all those drain holes are right there. So if there's any resin in there, they're just going to be constantly oozing out. Now he's been sitting here on the table for a while, but he's been like this. So any oozing that's going to end up happening is going to end up in the next day or two, which is kind of jacked up. So I got to sit here and fill in like three very large holes. I filled in the ones here already. Uh, and then there's three smaller holes. There were also, I've already gotten the ones on his hooves, but then there were two. There was one here and one here. And this one here was extremely hard because where the drain hole was at, and you can't really see it right now because I've been filling and sanding and filling and sanding and trying to, you can see a little bit of a, an indent right there where that is right there. But once I pop the light on there, if I can get it in the right spot, like that hole right there, if I get my hands out of the way, there they are. They really show up once you put the light on them. And they were very large holes. But once you... Take the light off, they kind of blend in very easily. Um, again, this one here was very difficult because the narrow nature of this part here, I had a high side here, a high side here, and a low side on each, so it was like a saddle. And filling that, I had to build a base inside the hole up enough to, to where I could finally get it to catch the top lip. And then just kept filling and kept filling and sanding and filling and sanding. I've already been here working on just these three models, these small guys, all these little guys, and their bases. I just started working on this one about an hour ago. And I thought I'd make a video, um, you know, and ask anybody who, who 3D prints models or, or things like this in resin, um, how, how do you guys go about cleaning up your cleaning up your supports, taking all the supports off and everything, and then fill in your drain holes. Um, obviously, that's the way I do mine. Um, and even on this guy, as I do each part, I will um, fill the drain holes. I'll clean up the supports as best as possible. But even then, I can come back here and I can turn this light on. And... Um, the underside of that right there, it's not really going to show up that well. I can see them. I've got a whole bunch of little nubs here where I missed a whole bunch of stuff. It's, I, I could sit here for days and days and just meticulously go over these and still find little nubs that I've missed. Um, I worked on this part here on his horns for several, several hours. Um, and I, I'm just curious how other people do their cleanups on all of the, the support pieces. And not only that, uh, if you're doing large pieces like this, are you filling in your seams? You can see this seam right here. It comes down to here. And then like, I've got a part here, a part here and a part here. So I've got a, a three-way seam that this one runs across this way and then that one runs upwards from there. Um, you know, do you fill in all your parts or your all your seams? 
I use um, some putty, epoxy putty, um, to fill in most of my stuff, but it, it doesn't really work that well, honestly. Um, this is what I use right there. But, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. So, like, this is what this epoxy putty ends up looking like. Um, I've sanded a little bit of this down, uh, but it's still, I could take you over to my dragon and show you on that one. I did not do a really good job on that one because the base on that one, you can see each part. There's like 10 parts on the base for that uh, dual dragon one. Um, and, and all of the, all the, all the lines are completely visible. Um, now I tried much harder to do a much better job on this one, but I've sanded and even like this, this piece here, um, down there at the bottom, you can still see a lot of that, uh, parts like this I filled and then I've sanded. I've sanded the crap. I had this built up so much trying to fill in this. Um, but then I still have situations like this. You can clearly see that this is not fully closed in. Um, and that's that's the effect right there that I get up here a lot. Um, so it, it's kind of like, how do you actually... I have no idea. None of the videos I've ever watched of people making stuff really talk about the prep work prior to, you know, from taking off of the supports to getting ready to prime. I, I rarely see videos on that. So, you know, if anybody out there has any ideas on that, you know, by all means, let me know. I would love to hear other people's stuff. And this is the smaller version of this guy here. It's the first time I've actually printed the same model in two different sizes. But that's what he's gonna end up looking like. And I think this one came out exceptionally well. I really dig how this one came out. Um, the only thing that I found that I didn't notice the first time when I first printed this the bottom of his this piece here it's easy to see where the the print failed this is actually a failed print right here and you can really see it there behind my my fingernail how that part's just kind of laying over there and squished because as it's printing it didn't print all the way out it just squished into one piece so i need to actually kind of get rid of that Square that up a little bit. But that's what he actually came out looking like after I painted him. Which, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with the way it came out, honestly. And I didn't do a whole lot of... Uh, all that red on there, that's two layers of speed paint. Army paint or speed paint. That's it and nothing else. I didn't do any highlighting. I didn't do any washing. I didn't do any, anything, just two layers of red speed paint. Um, even like the, the cloak back here in the back, I've got brown on there, black at the bottom. And it, it, I thought it came out exceptionally well as well. So I've got just regular, uh, what is it? Plate metal, plate mail metal is what I used on that. Came out really shiny, really silvery. And for a demon, it's a little too clean. So I should have um, dulled it down some, even as girdle, I used the same thing there. Um, then I, I switched to using a gray on his arm guards um, and a lot of the other stuff, like even the staff. Um, I did, actually I did do silver. I was wondering why that was so shiny. This part here, you can kind of see there's two different colors in that. Shows up much, much more, uh, noticeable up here. So this back part 
is the, the plate mail, and then that's just gray. But anyway, like I said, this is the first time I've done two, two of the same model, and I'm probably going to do um, much more detail on the larger version because he's much more noticeable. I don't think I'll be able to get away with painting exact same. Uh, he's way too big. And I think it, it 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 wouldn't do it justice, but I've still got a ton of work left to do on this. Um, and as I've been sitting here looking at it, filling in these drain holes, I'm seeing all the uh, even after every part that I pull off, pull the supports off, I sit there and, and sand on them and file on them. And as I'm sitting here, I'm just like, whoa, there's a lot of a lot of support pieces that I missed. Um, and I prefer to do them before I put the model together because it's much easier to do. Like this leg, all of the backside of this leg has little nublets all along it, which I've sanded and sanded and sanded, and I can still see them. And this is much easier to sand when I have this leg, which there's the seam right there in my hand than when it's on the model. But, or when it's assembled, I should say. But I, I really, these these parts just look absolutely wicked. I love the Loot Studios models. They're, they're, they're just so cool. So much detail. The, 30, 30, the 32 millimeter version is, is pretty cool. But once you really get into the, the 75, I think the detail that they put into the 75 millimeter versions are so much better. I mean, even this guy. He's biting off this dude's head and the amount of gore and just all the other stuff, it, it's ridiculous. I don't know if I can get his base up here or not because it's not put together. <clears throat> this is the first base that I've seen them do this. Oh crap, I just lost the sword. Uh, most of their bases that they do um, instead of drain holes, they'll have a round over and then they'll have another round over here. This is the first one where I've seen them use pegs to fit the pieces together. And I haven't sanded all of this base or worked this base up very well, but this is kind of, come on, buddy, work with me a little bit here. You go over there, out of the way. And I hope I don't step in on that um, sword that I dropped. Let me see if I can get this around here. But that's basically it. This helmet's down here that he's stepping on. There's a spot here. Um, way over there where the sword that I dropped. Of course, all the way to the back of the desk. So anyway, here's the sword. I dropped it on the ground a minute ago. Um, and it goes right there. I don't know. Ooh, can we, can we? But again, the amount of detail that's in here is, you really can't see most of it. Now this chain that you can see dangling off his wrist there, that's all um, a solid part print, which I thought they missed a great opportunity right there. As is with this part over here on this guy, you can see it came off the printer like that. As soon as I pulled all the uh, supports off of that thing, all those chains were just loose like that. Which I was, I was, it's the first part. It's the first print that I've done with a movable piece. Um, and I've seen like the dragon, you can print it ba basically straight on your, your build plate, remove it and then it articulates. And I was like, oh, I wanna make one of those one of these days. And then I, I came to this and as I was pulling it off, I was getting kind of aggressive. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, these are all moving parts. So anyway. Yeah, like I said, if anybody knows a better way to clean up stuff, 
or what your method is, or if you have a video of somebody cleaning stuff up, um, please, by all means, let me know so I can hopefully learn a better way to do this stuff or a less time consuming way. Because again, um, I've been here for four hours working on three models, three bases, this guy here. I haven't even started messing with his wings. Oh yeah, by the way, here's his wings. Give me a second. So he's even much bigger once you get the wings on. I cannot wait to build to paint this one. This is one of my most exciting ones so far that I'm just really looking forward to getting into this one. Um, I'm a little scared of this one because this is a lot of skin. I don't do skins that well, um, nor have I done a lot of skins at all. Uh, mostly everybody that I've painted so far has some type of clothing on or something. I've started storing a lot of my stuff over here that is primed and ready to paint because prior to that, everything was sitting over here, which meant I had no space over here to use my paint booth. So I've got all these ones here that are ready to prime that I will be working on over the next day or so. I'm trying to get these ones here done so that I can prime all of this together at the same time. So anyway, um, like I said, let me know if anybody knows anybody or knows good videos to take a look at. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. You'll have a great day. Take care.